Samir, in trying to discern the neuroaesthetics, the neuroscience of beauty, beauty comes in different forms. Uh, we could be happy, we could be sad. The valence of beauty is you can be all over the place. Uh, beauty is, 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 a, is a characteristic that is, is very hard to, de to determine. So can neuroscience help us to discern? Up to a point, yes. In fact, it's very interesting what you're saying because, because philosophies of aesthetics do not seem to have distinguished between two major types of beauty, Sorrowful Beauty, the Pieta of Michelangelo, for example, or the iconic pictures of Dorothy Lange uh, during the American Depression, and Joyful Beauty, the, the Graces of Canova or Johann Strauss Waltzes. All right, these are two very separate things. But, but as long as they are perceived as beautiful, they lead to activity in the same part of the brain, yeah. which is interesting in the sense that it makes of beauty something very abstract not tied to any particular thing. And in a, in a way, this is how philosophers of aesthetics have spoken, because you know, if you look at Aristotle or Plato, when they talk about beauty, or, or Schopenhauer or Kant, mm -hmm. when they talk about beauty, they do not tie themselves to any specific kind of beauty. Some of them think that musical beauty is the highest form of beauty, some of them poetic beauty mm -hmm. or uh, theatrical beauty, mm -hmm. in the case of, uh, of Aristotle. But um, they include all these things under the, the um, heading of beautiful. So let, let me understand the neuroscience of what's happening, because let's take a, a particular modality, it can be visual, so the perception is obviously in the occipital yes. lobe, uh, yes. the, the back of the brain, right. that's where the, the first uh, and secondary right. visual impulses come, right. so that's one. The second you talked about is beauty, and that's in, you told me, in the or orbital frontal, so that's your, now we have two different characters, we have a sad and a happy, so is it a different part of the brain of uh, lighting up for happiness or sadness? So, um, linked to that are different areas which are co-active. So with the experience, uh, with, with uh, the experience of beauty derived from sorrow, you have activity in the medial orbital frontal cortex, but you have co-activity in other parts of the brain which are more uh, associated with uh, uh, sorrowful experiences. Mm. And with joyful experiences, again, you have activity in the medial orbital frontal cortex, but co-activity in other areas of the brain, mm -hmm. which will actually raise an extremely interesting point. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, all the visual input going through the occipital cortex. Now, there must be at some level of the occipital cortex a selective process that says, look, this is very beautiful, mm -hmm. and therefore the signals from this should be channeled to the medial orbital mm -hmm. frontal cortex. Mm -hmm. And this is um, not beautiful, so it's not, because a face that is not beautiful will be registered as a face in the occipital cortex, but would not lead to activity in the medial orbital frontal cortex. Mm -hmm. So there is some selective process, and this is one of the big issues uh, in neuroscience which we would like to address. What process is it that selects, that signals are relayed to one area or not? That would seem to, to be um, perhaps at, at a lower level of the brain, in the, in the, in the thalamus? Could it be uh, the, thalamus? Uh, the thalamus connects to everything? It's the middle of the brain? It, it's not a conscious area? But. It's not a conscious area. Uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it could involve the thalamus or it, can, it could not, but it is a lower part of the brain. Yeah. I mean, it's a lower part in the hierarchy of the, of the right, uh, right. system. But it is not a conscious process. Right, yes. right. This selection of, of obviously beauty being being uh, happy or sad is a conscious experience, obviously. The experience is, of course, conscious, but the processes that lead to it are, are not conscious. So what does that imply neurophysiologically? Well, it implies that you have got to do a whole lot of work to find out how these selections are made. Yeah. Because, you see, to, to experience something as, as beautiful and as sorrowful, you require the activity in two separate areas, in addition to the, to the sensory areas. And it's, it's, a, it's a very intricate process of selection. Now, if you have beautiful music and that's happy and glorious and very lacrimonious and sad, do you have the same process except the, well, you have the auditory cortex as opposed to the visual cortex, but do all the other parameters of beauty remain? Yes, yes. Except, except if, if it is very sad, you have the medial orbital frontal cortex plus, plus. something else. Uh, or if it's very uh, joyful, Medial orbital frontal cortex plus something else.